Welcome back to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous, everyone. This is Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, and today we're going to be going over my reaction to CitizenCon 2022. We begin today's show in Port Alasar. Now, there's a very good reason for this before you go running away saying, here we are with the same stuff over and over again. And that's because there were many of us that thought that when Crusader was done and Arson was in the game, that we would see Port Alasar laid to waste, destroyed, maybe by the cat nine tails. I have no idea. But it hasn't been done. Instead, it's been moved much closer to Crusader, so you get beautiful views of that wonderful planet and its frame rate stuttering volumetric clouds. Here we go walking out to the landing pad and there's the first thing I'm going to talk about today, which is the new beautiful flyable ship in 3.15, which is going to be, yes it is, it's the one thing that nobody think would be here or everyone thought would be here. It's the Origin 400i. Go figure. No shock there. No surprise there. It's here. And it looks a lot like the leaks did. Even so, I had to have this ship. I'm, a, I, I'm absolutely enamored by almost all Origin ships, except for, of course, the 600, which I'm going to give them a chance to fix it before it gets melted or CCU to something else. Yeah, don't even look in that direction. You'll bring your computer to your knees. Anyway, the ship is amazing. Crew of three, 42 SCU of cargo, and it is absolutely useless in the game right now. Except as maybe a mid-range cargo ship. Not even as good as some other ships out there. Why did I buy it? Well, I know that once the game gets going, after 4.0 is out and the exploration job is finished, this ship is going to have a lot of functionality, a lot of use, and I am going to love flying it. Now, my mid-range ships, and I'm talking about non-capital mid-range. So when I'm saying that, I'm talking about like Freelancer and Constellation and 600 and Cutlass. Maybe the Cutlass and 600 are larger mid-range ships. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to think about that later. But as they go, I think that this one is the most well done, and that's a big issue with Star Citizen, because we go running towards all these wonderful ships and purchasing them well before the game, systems, equipment, and jobs are done. We're going to ride this elevator up. This is the X1 bay. We don't even have that yet. It's a tiny little hover bike and we don't have it yet. But this is where it goes. It goes in this area. So when you're using this ship as an exploration ship and land on a planet for the first time, you can take out your one hover bike and ride it around and look for plants and animals and all sorts of other things that you might want to bring back. I am so happy that they brought this type of entrance way back. This is the way that you used to enter the Freelancer. I loved it. I don't like the way that you enter it now. And it just is amazing. In front of us is the gravity generator. Yeah, it's like one of those things you could just stare at and you know it's sentient and reading your thoughts. You have three storage compartments here, one for weapons, three for spacesuits. Pretty decent. I would say these are for your armor, more or less. And then, of course, across from these, you have a standard UEE docking collar. Maybe you bring this out with a Carrick, and this will be able to do the smaller jump points and maybe Look for other things in the systems when you go flying into an area as a group. You have two hermetically sealed containers. Now, these are storage units for like 
biologics, whether they be animals or I should say flora or fauna. Of course, whenever you have a lift, you also have a ladder. But this is the only weird part that I have with this game. Outside of, you have all your equipment to the left of these emergency pods. But the emergency pods themselves, I mean, they have to be here. This is the only place they could be. But when you're in battle, it's going to be very difficult for the crew to get here. I mean, you're going to have to use that ladder. I'd like to run drills with people and have people try to blow you up and you try to get to the... And here it is, the standard origin cockpit. No buttons, no switches, no levers, no bells, no whistles, no nothing. All right, we're going to cut here, and I'm going to come back for more thoughts. Now, the ship looks like it's a cross between something in Star Citizen because it's got a very origin look to it. It also looks like something that might be in Star Wars. Like maybe the Phantom Menace? Oh, sorry. I just mentioned the movie that should not be mentioned. Anyway. I see a lot of good in this ship. I see a lot of detail in this ship, and I'm very happy with it. But it wouldn't be a Star Citizen without them releasing a ship we don't need right now. In fact, there's not really many ships we need right now. There are many ships in the game already that we can use. Ships that can do the jobs that we do in the game much better. I mean, would you take this ship over a prospector? because you could make money mining right now. Would you take this ship over a Freelancer or a Freelancer Max because they're in less expensive and carry more cargo? If you're looking to support the game, definitely look at this ship as something that you might want in the future. But I just don't see a place for it in the Star Citizen we have now, except for the way I'm using it right now, as eye candy. I don't know what it is about Daymar, but every time I get a brand new ship, I bring it here. It's the lighting, it's the sand, I don't know what it is. But we're bringing the 400i to Daymar. And this would be a perfect opportunity to show off the X1 that's not in the game right now. Because the X1 is absolutely the only bike that I know of that's going to fit inside that front bay. Maybe the Ranger, when that comes out, I'll have to look at the specs on that. I'm not sure. You might be able to handle something in the back cargo hold, but why would you give up the 42 SCU of cargo? It's such a beautiful ship, I know, but I just would find it hard making it a recommendation until something like Star Citizen 4.0 comes out. Yes, I said 4.0. Anyway, let's move inside. Exiting the flight deck and looking over to starboard, we have the lift, while on the port side, we have the single, only, one bathroom on the ship. And I think that's fine. With a crew of three, one bathroom should be fine. We do not find the reflectionless mirror here. We find a video display instead, and filled with a bunch of things we can't touch. Back down this way on the starboard side, we have the crew quarters. Pretty nice. I like it. Each one has their own video unit. Each one has their own storage unit. Across the hall on the port side is the captain's quarters. And I think this is well done. For those of you flying a small ship, I think this is absolutely amazing. What I find even more so amazing is that we're still using a mice and keyboard, a mouse and keyboard in the future. I don't know. I would have expected computers to be more like wearing glasses in the future, like the Moby glass that they give us. Anyway, that's pretty amazing. I like how there's plants all over the ship to give a homey feel. Maybe it has something to do with life support too. A nice bed, nice cabin. I like it. The aft part of the ship is very well done. It houses a galley, a dining area, and a hollow table. It's, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, I think they've done exceedingly well here. Much better than they did on their own Constellation Phoenix. But the hollow table is something that I might have had retract, so maybe I could put some other wreck items here. But nonetheless, it's exceedingly well done. I love this ship. It's beautiful. Yeah, a tiny little sink, but I understand. I mean, maybe they have a sterilizing dishwasher or something. 
So moving on from the 400i, I'm going to give my opinion of Citizen Cone. Stayed home from work that day and watched it and played Valheim at the same time. I mean, the main reason for that was some of the panels were so technical, so very, very detailed that I didn't think it was something that I actually was going to enjoy. And I have to say this, I should have listened to them the first time because there was a lot in them. I did listen to them multiple times since then. It's hard to put on a virtual conference and many game companies, many businesses, even my business, are using that virtual environment to introduce new products, to show off new services, to have large scale meetings with people. And it is something that is quite difficult to pull off. I think this was a very good citizen con. I think we got a very high level idea of where the game is going. The gameplay they showed off in the new star system, Pyro, was more than incredible. I liked it a lot. But then I started to think when watching it for the second time. There's a lot of things that CIG expects us to do in this game. A lot of things that in reality we would think of them as jobs. And I, I gameplay, I game for fun. I game for a release, for a distancing from reality. But the game is adding so many reality items into it, I'm wondering how fun it will be in the end. There are so many things that make me worry about this game, and so many things that make me just smile and say, ooh, ah, look at the candy. But when I think about two of the biggest things that are going to affect me, Death of a Spaceman, which in the beginning I was all for, but remembering when I played Star Wars Galaxies and how building up that Jedi character that took me so many hours to actually start to feel the Force, and then having permadeath in it, it was... it was emotionally shattering if you died and lost your character. In Star Citizen right now, you're going to lose your things. You're going to lose your ship. And you'll have insurance, and you'll have insurance on your health, too. So now, like reality, I have to pay health insurance. I have to worry about drugs. I have to worry about doctor's visits. There are so many things in this game that are trying to be modeled after real life. I'm not certain how many people are actually going to love the game in the end. I mean, take for instance. If I take a freelancer and move it from Pyro 3 to, say, Hurston, I then have to find people to help me unload it. It's a small enough ship. I might be able to do it myself or maybe just hire a couple of NPCs. How much could it cost, right? Well, now somebody takes a caterpillar and moves a bunch of cargo from Pyro 3 to Hurston. Now what's going on? Now they need to hire a small team of people or have an organization help them unload it. Okay, it's not going to take so long. Maybe you have three to five friends. You get the thing unloaded pretty much. You get checked out in a forklift. You learn how to drive the forklift, right? Whatever it is. And you learn how to take the pallets off and where to put them inside the cargo hold. Yeah, maybe I'm getting too detailed. Maybe it's not going to be that detailed but they didn't really tell us how detailed it was gonna be. But what they did say is that we were gonna to have to unload it ourselves, find friends to help, or hire NPC. Well, then you start thinking about ships on the scale of something like a Hull C, Hull D, Hull E, which now don't even just take friends to unload the cargo, but you have to have a fleet of Oh my God, it's going to blow my mind just thinking of it. How many Hull A's and Hull B's do you need to unload those things? 
and bring them to the docking bays, to the cargo bays on the space stations or on the planets that you're going to, and how many people on the ground have to unload each one. And it starts to get a little bit mind-boggling. I know these things will work themselves out, but that's not the only thing that worries me. Something that worries me a lot right now is the implementation of losing your stuff. We're all gonna lose stuff. We're gonna be shot, we're gonna be killed, we're gonna fly into meteors, into asteroids, whatever you might call them. Well, meteors falling to the ground, asteroids just flying around in space, and bam, you're dead. So they've implemented this right now. But what they haven't implemented yet is a way to get your stuff back. And why do I say that? And I, I, I really, and this is the one part that boggles my mind that they put some things in the game that are going to cause grief and sorrow sometime. And that's, there's a lot of us that have been in this game for a very long time and we've accumulated a lot of stuff, whether we purchased it or got it as gifts because we pay $20 a month or $10 a month to be a subscriber. So you're wearing your subscriber armor. You're out and about, say, on Yella, just having fun with your friends. And a team of other people come around and shoot you and steal all your stuff. Now you have no way to get it back. So the rust gear, those wonderful cat armors, wonderful rifles and pistols and shotguns and sniper rifles that you might have gotten are gone. So what I'm going to tell you right now is that I understand this will be worked out over time. This isn't the end result, but this is what's going to be in the game for the time being. Yes, we have 4.0 and Pyro and so many cool things coming out in the future and an increase in the advocacy in the Stanton system because you're going to have a lawless system, Pyro, that you could actually go and engage in piracy. There's a lot coming to this game and a lot to be excited for, but there's also some things to worry about. Now, Arson is the next great thing inside of the game. It's a floating city, huge volumetric clouds, and no frame rate. But it also brings the attention to the graphics engine that Star Engine is using. DirectX 11. And it also brings attention to games that for the whole history of their existence, Flight Simulator, X-Plane, have never been able to get great frame rates, and that's because of volumetric clouds. I, I look at this with hope that Vulcan is going to change a lot of things. It definitely lifted the frame rates up close to and sometimes over 60 FPS for X-Plane. We won't talk about Flight Sim right now because to me, that's still a game in development even though it's out. But I'm looking at this from the perspective of Vulcan's going to give us a huge boost in so many things. And I can't wait till it actually boosts what's going on here. I'm very excited for the implementation of the Vulcan engine. As soon as they get that API working and out to us, I think we're going to be much happier with the frame rates. Until then, they're never going to be tuning graphics, making things better for us. Right now, it's kind of just shoveling all of the different features at us and fixing them, making them work, polishing them making them better over time. So I'm leaving Citizen Con with the thoughts of there's a lot here. There's even further to go, but at least there's more to do right now. By the end of next year, hopefully we'll be seeing Squadron 42 come out. It's hard to even fathom that with how far they are right now. I don't think Star Citizen is ever going to have a launch day. I think it's going to be more like a Wargaming.net game. You're going to see constant updates, constantly 
rolling out changes, constantly tweaking things, constantly adding things, constantly, constantly, constantly. And one day we're going to look back and say, do you remember when we only had two star systems? Or do you remember when we only had five star system? I'll be long dead, but at least my grandchildren will be able to enjoy it. Well, that's my only joke for today. I really did like Citizen Con. I wish it was live. There was so much going on there that I really need to break this down into multiple videos. So I will do a video that's based around the gameplay they showed. I will do a video based on the other ship that they released, which is called the Liberator. And I will do a video basically on almost everything I could think of for Citizen Con. But right now I want to sit back. I want to enjoy the ship that I said was useless because I like it. And that, of course, is the 400i. I've already had a lot of fun, a lot of fun in my friend's A1, which I think the Hercules is amazing. It's a wonderful ship, could carry a Nova tank, and now you have a bomber. But I don't think there's enough differentiation of that bomber to make it exciting. We'll talk about that, too. It's good to be back. It's good to be doing videos. I'll improve the quality over time. Right now I'm getting used to a new microphone. Let me know how it sounds. And with all of the things that are going to be going on over the next few months, with the Aerospace Expo and with the Military Week and with all sorts of other things coming out for Star Citizen, I look forward to 3.16. I look forward to 4.0. And I look forward to coming back here as often as I can to give you my opinion, to bring you my content, and to show you why I think this is going to be the best game that you can play if you like Space Sims. I know that right now it seems like there's a long way to go. But when you look at how things are starting to snowball, it's only a matter of time before we're all playing this game and looking back and saying, wow, I can't believe I even worried a little bit. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button below. It will really help out the channel. And don't forget to subscribe and then click that notification bell icon so you get notified of all my future videos. And with that said, you all be safe out there. And I will talk to you soon.